Oh, a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Baiju's exam prep. I hope all of you are doing really well. Uh, through the course of this lecture, we will very, very quickly uh, be covering some important aspects of your Dalit writings. Dalit literature forms an important part, an integral part of your understanding, uh, particularly when we are looking at subaltern studies or when we are looking at uh, your literature from the Indian belt, uh, we are able to see the emergence of Dalit writings. So today, our primary focus is going to be on looking at the important aspects of Dalit literature. So I'd recommend all of you to definitely keep uh, a notepad or, uh, you know, pieces of A4 size sheets, etc. with you for sure during the course of this entire lecture. Uh, without further ado, let's just very quickly uh, get started. This is the first part. This is the first part of your uh, understanding Dalit literature or Dalit literature made easy. Uh, tomorrow's lecture, we will continue with the second part and those two parts you can tie it together and study Dalit literature uh, entirely. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Rupesh, Nikomoni, Babli, Vismay, Madhusmata, Anamika, Aftara, Komal, uh, Literary First by Mayang, Juhi, everybody. Good night. Uh, good morning. I was about to say good night. Okay. For some reason, I think that was a Freudian slip. Maybe I have not uh, completely slept. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's just very quickly dive into looking at Dalit literature. Uh, so see, when we are talking about Dalit literature, this is something which is important. Why? Because now there is a lot of stress on subaltern studies. What is? What do we mean by subaltern studies? Subaltern studies is basically the studies for the people who were not uh, voicing their opinions. History was written from the perspective of people in power and what are we able to see that a class, a cadre of society which was silenced absolutely, that particular cadre is actually called subaltern, not visible, invisible to the mainstream discourse altogether. So Dalit literature is a very important part of your uh, subaltern studies and when we talk about Dalit literature, it is actually associated with looking at caste system. So caste system is something which is as old as the arrival of of the Aryans, we're able to see that uh, that India is a deeply divided society, very segregated, reg uh, very, very uh, segregated society. There uh, is a proper realistic portrayal in these Dalit writings of the caste problem, the menace of caste that we're able to see. Uh, so what do we uh, what do we need to understand over here? A po uh, like, you know, an important pointer is the fact that that Dalit literature, first of all, we need to understand the position of the, uh, the, uh, the, the Dalit, so to say, how Dalit becomes a word which is evolved after multiple numerous words that were used, like the Shudras, uh, the, the Varna system was actually a part of it. So it's, it's, it's actually a result of the segregation that is there. So uh, the agenda for today's class is we'll understand very quickly the origins of Dalit literature. We will look at what are the features of Dalit aesthetics according to uh, a very important writer who's giving us the features of Dalit aesthetics. We'll also in the features be discussing how autobiography is a dominant form of writing when we are looking at Dalit literature. Then we'll cover a white canvas of writers. We'll be looking at these white canvas of writers altogether who are coming, helping us understand the Dalit canon altogether and how it is trying to uh, systemically fight against the silence that the Dalits have been experiencing for a very long time. Okay, uh, so uh, without further ado, let's just dive into a quick discussion. The first things first, we need to understand that Dalit literature, we need to understand the caste system, the de deeply stratified, rigidified, codified society that we are able to see. Even Edmund Burke, Edmund Burke had written the idea of caste as synonymous with the idea of India. Right. That's how India was inextricably linked to the Dalit identity. Edwin Burke also spoke about it. But what we are able to see is that we are a deeply divided, stratified society in the historical record altogether. And what are we able to see? We are able to see the humiliation, the marginalization, the systemic violence, the systemic oppression that is conducted on approximately over 250 million people, over two. 
150 million people and there are more right this is like the figure of uh, people that we're talking about which are a part of your dalit canon altogether um and you know the, the word dalit is becoming popular as a marker of identity in 1972 i will be showing you a lot of slides i'll be making you write a couple of things so like i said please keep your pen notepads handy uh, take the theoretical inputs tomorrow we will practice also more things all together so the dalit panthers of bombay see there are two very important parts of dalit writings one is your dalit literature your dalit literature which is coming from maratha uh, maharashtra so the marathi dalit literature and the tamil dalit literature these two are very very popular uh, strands of dalit literature rather the hindi dalit literature was extremely slow in picking up the pace altogether and why was it extremely slow we'll talk about this also because according to the mainstream um hindi speaking world um and we'll talk more about this it wasn't really important for you to be a dalit to write about the dalit experiences but that is where people like om prakash valmiki will say no it is important because the dalit anubhav is very important otherwise you'll only have a dalit anuman right so the experience is more important than the speculation we'll talk about all these terms all together so this term dalit becomes very popular in 1972 when the dalit panthers of bombay are coming together we'll talk about them also so don't worry about it the dalit panthers the dalit panthers of bombay are coming together uh, the word dalit means beaten crushed all together uh, but what are we able to see that dalit literature is actually a literature which is not an art for art sake writing all together that we are largely looking at and this is something that we'll be uh, speaking about now when was uh, the word dalit used for the very first time especially with respect to the word caste so when we are talking about the word caste when was dalit literature as a word used and now i want all of you uh, to to probably use the chat box understand this entire uh, history that we are talking about so when when was it used when was it used all together good morning very very quickly good morning when when was it used so the word dalit was used for the very first time by so please remember that dalit literature is actually getting inspired the dalit discourse is getting inspired by two very important aspects what are the two very important aspects the two very important aspects are a marxism because marxism is talking about equality and egalitarian world and buddhism right and buddhism which is again trying to tell you about every individual having the power b r ambedkar baba saheb ambedkar was rather he converted himself into buddhism and never looked back again uh, uh, so what are we able to see that these two forces are largely giving a lot of impetus to the dalit discourse altogether and when we are looking at the term dalit baba saheb ambedkar and jyotibai rao phule so jyotibai rao phule was the first ever person to properly use the word dalit even though in 1972 the dalit panthers association is actually coming and popularizing the term but with respect to caste it was jyotibai rao phule who had first used right it was jyotibai rao phule who was the first person to use the word dalit in a proper way altogether right so this is how we need to understand there are two pointers that you have to remember with regards to the word first of all you need to remember that how the word is becoming popular as a marker of identity in 1972 with the dalit panthers of bombay coming in and popularizing the term and with respect to caste we are able to see that jyotibai rao phule is the first person to actually use the word dalit now understand this that dalit literature is actually trying to interrogate what is dalit literature trying to do it is trying to interrogate it's trying to challenge there are two things that it's trying to do first it's trying to interrogate the mainstream hindu discourses and second it is trying to challenge these discourses by giving voice to the invisible altogether so what is it fighting against it's fighting against the upper caste brahmanical hegemony 
you need to understand that as well the upper caste hegemony the upper caste brahmanical hegemony is something the upper caste hegemony particularly the upper caste brahmanical hegemony is something which is being targeted it is being challenged all together over here via your dalit writings via your dalit literature all together even in recent times we are able to see a lot of studies around the same corner all together um i hope all of you are aware about the stratified society that how in india we followed the varna system right <clears throat> so the varna system was being followed uh, and what was the varna system it was a very very stratified way of looking at the society based on class categories all together you were stratifying the entire society the brahman kshatriya vaishyas and the shudras the untouchable so to say who were coming in so it was a very very stratified society that you had the brahmins occupying the top of the rung all together so what are we able to see we are able to see that dalit literature Literature is not something which is an art for art's sake. Literature, it is a literature which is a sort of a protest writing. It's action literature. These are terms that come in your exam. What is this? This is mass literature. This is literature of action. Dalit literature is a literature of action. It is a protest literature. It wants to ca uh, ca capture the lived experience to challenge the upper caste hegemony of the Brahmanical system altogether. That is what Dalit writings, particularly, are uh, looking at. The organization that was founded by Namdeo Dasal, Arjun Dangle, Raja Dale, J V Pawar on 29th May in Maharashtra. what was this organization this was an ambedkarite social organization it wanted to fight against caste discrimination what was it wanting to do it was wanting to fight against the class stratification the class uh, 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 the, the hierarchies which were there what is the right answer here rp1 <coughs> what is the right answer what what becomes the correct answer here everyone very very quickly very very quickly yes vahida tasneem has answered it correctly the dalit panthers absolutely right so the dalit panthers are coming in right you are having the dalit panthers who are coming so all these organizations all these organizations are equally important why because you are able to see that with the launch of these organization there is stratified support right there is stratified support that is given so uh, you can keep this in mind see uh, these are all pointers that you will have to keep in mind because a lot of times these questions are also being asked to you all right uh, the word dalit is used by phule with respect to caste dalit literature when is dalit literature becoming popular this term dalit literature okay dalit understood jyotibai rao phule was the first person to use it uh, with respect to caste when is the word dalit literature being used when is the word dalit literature being used dalit literature there was a conference that was organized in 1958 and that is when dalit literature was first time used in this conference of maharashtra dalit sahitya sahyog right so what had happened was that there was this conference this was the first conference where people were using the term <coughs> so sorry where pe people were using the term dalit literature and who was this this was actually a conference of the maharashtra so you can even write this down the maharashtra dalit sahitya the maharashtra dalit sahitya sangha and that is when we are able to see that for the very first time the word dalit literature is actually coming in this was held in bombay this was held in bombay and they also identified they said that dalit literature is all about anubhava it is all about experience it's a realistic portrayal and it has to go hand in hand with the dalit liberation movement because dalits are using the weapon of literacy they are using the weapon of literacy in order to fight against the brahmanical uh, code uh, code altogether uh, so please remember that and here absolutely right as vahida said it correctly the dalit panthers is the right answer dalit panthers is basically coming this is the organization that was founded by uh, dasal by dangle by dale by pawar in maharashtra 
it was a dalit panthers that we were talking about so dalit panthers was in maharashtra but you also have to remember there was the dalit mahasabha where was the dalit mahasabha see structured support is required because if you want to uplift a community you have to give them this is what antonio gramsci also calls you have to give them organic intellectuals and traditional intellectuals structural support has to be given right that that is becoming important you have the dalit mahasabha you can also write this down in case if it comes in your exams you are having the dalit mahasabha where is this this is in andhra pradesh dalit panthers is in bombay dalit panthers is in bombay dalit mahasabha is in andhra pradesh right then you also then you are also able to see that Dal dalit sangharsha is coming where is dalit sangharsha coming uh, the dalit sangharsha samiti uh, the dalit sangharsha samiti is there in karnataka and there are many others there are many others which are coming in so dalit panthers in bombay dalit sangharsha samiti in karnataka dalit mahasabha in andhra pradesh and there are many others so what is this this is structured organized support which is being given for making sure that dalits are using the weapon of literacy in order to fight against the mainstream discourse which had silenced them so far which had not given them the opportunity to actually speak so far they are now responding to the mainstream atrocities they are fighting for social in uh, social justice from the social injustices that they've been facing and also remember that dalit uh, you know uh, so so this entire dalit canon also traces the origins of caste system altogether uh, you are able to see that pushyamitra sunga uh, in in uh, almost 870 uh, 880 uh, 187 bc that is where the practice of untouchability had started it was so old it was so very old all together that you are able to see that from the times the aryans had come to uh, your pushyamitra sangha's rule pushyamitra sangha's rule that is where the dalit canon the dalit uh, not the dalit canon but you know uh, the the injustices perpetuated against the the the, the people of the lower rung had started in pushyamitra sangha's times all together that is where we are able to see so please remember that dalit mahasabha dalit panthers dalit sangharsha samiti these are all societies these are all this is all organized support that is being given so dalit panthers over here i think wahida was the first person to answer it correctly after that i have not uh, happened to see the chat box now who launched the dalit buddhist movement in 1956 he also was responsible for the pune pact when nearly half a million dalits formerly untouchables joined and converted to navyana buddhism and you know he himself had not uh, gone back away from buddhism who are we talking about over here who are we talking about over here this is like really simple uh, but buddhism and marxism were the two major emphasis uh, two major uh, important sources of inspiration for the forming of the dalit consciousness absolutely right dulal wahida priya everybody has given the right answer everybody has given the right answer absolutely right absolutely right 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 everybody dipsa shikha anamika surbi siali diti priya suman rashmita zahida rupesh everybody is giving the right answer baba saheb ambedkar is absolutely the right answer here so here when we are looking at always keep that in mind that marxism particularly the teachings of gramsci because gramsci is the person and today's homework is also linked to that gramsci is a person who's helping us understand subaltern discourse he is enabling us to understand the subaltern studies in a better way altogether and when we are talking about when we are discussing about the entire aspect the entire aspect of um, you know dalit studies we must remember that both marxism and buddhism have played a very key role in building the dalit consciousness so baba saheb ambedkar was the person who actually started this conversion to buddhism and a lot of people were actually following suit right there are works like uh, essays on untouchables and untouchability and hyliation of caste is a very very important essay the untouchables who uh, who are they and where why are they called untouchables these are very important works and who's the writer of this work annihilation of caste is very critically important right after looking at annihilation of caste you should be able to uh, recollect that you know who's this person uh, whom are we talking about and as it is when we when we are looking at he is the key architect when it comes to even framing of the constitution and accordingly giving inclusivity to everybody 
Yes, absolutely right. Absolutely right. It is Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Or is it like the previous answer? Is it like the previous answer that you've given? Uh, or or was it like uh, the the answer for this for this question only? So annihilation of caste, by the way, also comes in in your exam. So this is an important work that we uh, are largely able to see. Now here there are a couple of things that you have to uh, keep in mind. This was actually the speech that B R Ambedkar had given, and uh, you know annihilation of caste is trying to tell. you it's trying to address uh, the the need all together to make sure that you are trying to give visibility to an entire section of the society that was silenced just while and how the the hindus have been absolutely the upper caste hindus have been absolutely unaware about how they have uh, systemically altogether not at all um, help um, uh, mahatma gandhi and baba saheb ambedkar always had this conversation all together and uh, mahatma gandhi had also written a reply to annihilation of caste right so there was also a reply that was given to uh, uh, to baba saheb ambedkar by gandhi um because you know gandhi uh, mahatma gandhi over here had got a very conservative opinion he knew of course the problems but he is like largely we can be together let's not give special privileges but eventually even he agreed all together so um uh, please remember that and uh, annihilation of caste is actually also giving you a reply uh, to mahatma gandhi uh, there's there's a very very popular uh, question that actually come uh, comes in your exam and what is it okay uh, the the addition annihilation of caste actually at the very beginning talks uh, like you know has has a preface introduction to buddha and dramund dramund had written these lines he that will not reason is a bigot he that cannot reason is a fool he that dare not reason is a slave you can write this down so um uh, when annihilation of caste is coming on the cover page itself the cover page mentions annihilation of caste with reply to mahatma gandhi and in that in that what is mentioned it is mentioned that these are lines by dramund these are lines by dramund he that will not reason is a bigot that means you will not reason you know that you should reason but you will not reason you are a bigot all right he that cannot reason if you don't know how to reason you are a fool and he that not reason is a slave and buddha's statement is also quoted no truth as truth and uh, and untruth as untruth you should know truth as truth and untruth as untruth you should be able to differentiate you should be able to call that yes this is exploitation that is taking place so these questions can actually come to you that you know at the uh, on the cover page itself uh, there are references to whom there are references uh, there are lines quoted from buddha there are lines quoted from dramund please keep that in mind and uh, you know you, that entirely tells you the entire discourse all together so baba saheb ambedkar is writing all these works particularly annihilation of caste is important to whom does subaltern studies owe its origin subaltern studies was started by whom so there is this person who is really critically important in the discourse of subaltern studies and because when we are talking about dalit literature by the way dalit literature is also called fourth world literature what is fourth world literature fourth world literature is now a very obsolete term we do not use it at all first world literature is the <clears throat> the european the western literature uh, the american literature that we are talking about the second world literature also has partially american and the russian literatures that are coming in third world literature are all your colonies which are there and fourth world literature is actually the literature where your native american writers are included fourth world literature also includes dalit and tribal writings all together now there are specific courses on dalit and tribal writings there are specific courses in universities especially universities encouraging comparative writings and comparative literature so there is specific focus on tribal writings tribal literature and this is actually a part of the fourth world writings altogether right uh, yes absolutely right wahida has answered it correctly uh, dipsa has answered it correctly dulal has answered it correctly i'm going in the uh, i just went in the backward direction absolutely right it is ranajit guha subaltern studies are associated primarily and that is going to be one of your homeworks also today but please remember that whenever we are looking at subaltern studies whenever we are talking about subaltern studies here in subaltern studies you are able to see that that ranajit guha has played a very very critical role 
right the way ranajit guha the historian has faced shaped everything that becomes really important so ranajit guha is absolutely the right answer here spivak is also considered to be spivak is also considered to be a part of this legacy uh, but ranajit guha has played a very very critical lo- role who are the subalterns the subalterns are the invisible the marginalized the people at the lower rung of the society who are not getting visibility people who have not been uh, spoken about in the mainstream discourses right or uh, whom you are not really worried about in the mainstream discourses so that is what you are talking about largely right so that is of course important which writer developed the aesthetics of dalit literature so there is a writer who is helping us with the aesthetics of dalit literature uh, see dalit literature is actually um, you know something which is uh, becoming very very popular in maharashtra maharashtra is of course getting a lot of uh, visibility over here uh, is getting a lot of thrust uh, altogether and a lot of people have already started producing dalit writings by 1960s so who's the person <coughs> very good dipsa has given the right answer very good and after that everybody is right correct dipsa absolutely right so here we have to remember that dalit aesthetics is something which is being shaped the features of dalit writings are being shaped all together right and that is sharan uh, sharan kumar limble absolutely right now when we are looking at when we are talking about sharan kumar limble he is writing akar mashi that is his autobiography which which is a uh, really important santosh uh, bhumkar is translating it this question actually comes in your exams and we'll uh, we'll be discussing this as well in greater detail uh, but what are we predominantly able to see we are predominantly able to see that sharan kumar limble is coming he uh, limble is also a person who's written the outcast okay uh, he's also a writer who's written the outcast the outcast is an autobiography that sharan kumar uh, sharan kumar limble has written so here dalit aesthetics what are the features of dalit aesthetics that he talks about anuman is not uh, important but anubhav is important you have to have a realistic portrayal you need to have a realistic portrayal that is something that you largely have to keep in mind uh, how you know please understand that dalit liberation will always go hand in hand with dalit literature because the more you're writing you're giving voice to the voiceless the more you're leading to the development of a canon altogether right so that is something which is really important and this is something that sharan kumar limble actually talks about in greater detail uh, so here sharan kumar limble is of course important uh, you also have to keep in mind that how limble is coming up with an autobiography what is the name of the autobiography that uh, sharan kumar limble has written the autobiography is called the outcast the name of the autobiography is famously termed as the outcast the outcast is telling you about the mahar women so you know what 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 used to happen is it was really absolutely uh, th- this this work is so uh, if when you read it in very simple plain languages uh, you you start having goosebumps so there is this practice where mahar women mahar women had to actually they were they were the objects of the lust of the upper class society altogether and limbley's own sister and mothers were also mother was also victim of this particular practice so what used to happen was that the mahar women they were sexually oppressed by the upper class brahmin and upper class landlords used to take these young dalit girls all together um, and these young dalit girls would become objects of lust for those uh, uh, those monsters all together so limbley was trying to actually talk about this practice he opened up about this practice in the outcast that how the mahar women the young dalit women were just treated as commodified objects altogether in outcast he talks about that and sharan kumar limble uh, so this is sharan this is sharan kumar limble uh, he is giving us a treatise on what is dalit aesthetics how do you define dalit aesthetics how do you basically uh, talk about dalit aesthetics how do you give uh, identity to dalit writings uh, altogether so he was predominantly saying that whenever you are talking about the dalit experience you cannot use language which is that of like you know a polished britisher you cannot use that it's a mundane language you have to use the imagery you have to use the idioms which portray the reality of the dalit experience the dalit experience becomes really important the dalit experience becomes really important you know you should see all of these books the cover pages and that is something that i'll show you tomorrow also but you can also see it yourself the cover pages are so telling 
there there'll be like a boy uh, who will be sitting on steps so steps where we wouldn't even want to uh, you know ideally walk bare feet people are sleeping steps where so so that is what is telling you the reality of the dalit experience that is the reason they say that you need to understand that till the time you do not have the anubhav of living like a dalit you can never actually express the atrocities that people have been facing and that is the reason the experience becomes so critically important to the dalit writers altogether the dalit writers are really craving for this entire experience altogether because see you have to give visibility to that and sharan kumar limbley has written this autobiography called akar mashi uh, santosh bhumkar is the translator of the work akar mashi limbley is telling us about the aesthetics what are the dalit aesthetics altogether according to sharan kumar limbley He says that the Dalit Anubhav, the experience, has to take precedence over Dalit Anuman. You can just make a sort of a speculation that what would the person be experiencing, but you can never ever tell the reality. You can never ever tell the reality till the time you have not lived it. Till the time you have not lived it. Right? Sympathy, empathy has to be generated via the literature. You should understand that what pain are they undergoing? The agony, resistance, anger, assertion. the protest of the dalits has to be expressed realistic portrayal in language that is being used by the dalits that is something that limbley actually discusses and these all are very important representatives of dalit writings namdeo dasal lakshman gaikod arjun dangle hira bansod all of them and and many more there are so many representatives of your dalit writings uh, of your dalit literature you can also make a note of this you can also uh, largely make a note of this so basically what was happening is by 1960s you had a lot of people you had a lot of people like babarao babul uh, we'll talk about babarao bagul right now baba rao bagul uh, these are all very popular writings uh, by the 1960s and dalit writings you also have bandhu madhav uh, so these are people these are people who are writing sharing their uh, their experiences all together bring, bringing the reality like sharan kumar limbley is the outcast about mahar women they're telling you right there is also shakaro uh, so so all of these people are writing they are trying to tell you about the anubhav they are trying to help us understand what is happening they are producing dalit writings they are giving voice to the marginalized altogether um, you know or you can also write all these works they are very very important so there is also hazari's untouchable the autobiography of an indian outcast you can write this down as well uh, so so there is uh, there is all these works are of course important there is hazari hazari's untouchable hazari's untouchable these are all works which are giving visibility the autobiography of an indian outcast autobiography is a, by the way a major form of writing which is being used by them because through their experiences they are representing the experience of the community through their experiences they are representing the experience of the community you have to keep that aspect also uh, in mind right so hazari untouchable the autobiography of an indian outcast uh, you know here you are able to see that how dalits are facing atrocities from the day when they are born hazari's work actually ends that you know the way the, the, the way that a dalit is born you are actually you already become a father because you've created a legacy and how the childhood is something which is so problematic the childhood is a very troubled childhood for a dalit child it's a very very troubled childhood because you're not able to understand what is happening you're not able to make a lot of sense of uh, what is it that is uh, coming across so all of these writers and we'll just take a look at most of these writers also very very quickly now which book actually helped popularize dalit literature throughout india in the recent time so there is this book which really helped us popularize the canon of dalit writings popularize the canon of dalit literature which book are we talking about in recent times that popularized this entire notion yes aftara absolutely right absolutely right you can write you can talk about the contours of the horse you can talk about uh, the way that the horse looks like but what the horse is feeling after a heavy day of work that only the horse can represent 
Absolutely right. Okay, what is the right answer here? Poison bread. Very good. Dulal has given the right answer. Vaida has given the right answer. Uh, very good. Very good. Poison bread is absolutely the right answer. Poison bread is something which is helping us popularize the entire discourse of uh, Dalit writing. So here we are able to see that you know poison bread becomes a work. Um, see, understand all of these writings. Of course, uh, Dasal or or for that matter, Shankumar Limble Limble. They're all con. Contributing to the development of Dalit writings, but there are some writers uh, who are actually hitting it very hard at the very beginning. They are creating a sort of a uh, over all together for themselves. And Poison Bread is actually one such work. So Poison Bread, what was it? It was actually translations from modern uh, Marathi Dalit writings. Right. Um. Even Hindu has covered it multiple times. So Hindu has got a supplementary, a complementary paper, uh, every Sunday, which also has literature works all together. Hindu has covered it multiple times. Right. So, uh, so, so basically, what are we able to see? We're able to see that poison bread. So, so next time you can also get a question, uh, on the subtitle of the poison bread. Uh, you you should know about the subtitle of the poison bread as well. So please keep that in mind that you know the entire discourse or or you know this entire act of speaking about the Dalits is actually largely getting started with the coming with the arrival of a work like the poison bread. So poison bread translations from modern Marathi literature by Arjun Dangle. Uh, so this, please remember the subtitle because next time in your exams you can also get the subtitle all together. This is the time when you are able to see that the Dalits have started speaking all together. Right, uh, you know, see, understand this that the work was trying to jolt the audience altogether. It wanted people to understand that you know there are these works that are already largely being uh, written, being uh, spoken about, and we need to be aware about it. We we can't really sit in in silos altogether. Um, we need to remember that, right? We need to remember that. We need to keep that in mind. That is what these writers are largely discussing. Uh, now let's look at some writers. Also, we have writers like Mahashweta Devi. Mah Shweta Devi is of course an, a very significantly important writer that we are having. Oh God, I thought that. Yeah, Mashwata Devi is a very important writer. Uh, Spivak is the person who's translating the short stories of uh, Mashwata Devi. Mashwata Devi is talking about Adivasis, the Dalits, the marginalized. She's focusing on women. She was writing originally in Bangla. Very popular works, right? Uh, number 1084's Mother. Uh, and, and this is written in the Naxalite, backdrop of the Naxalite revolution. This question comes in your exam. So very, very famous, Hazar Shurasi's Ma, right? So this particular work is written by Mahashwata Devi. Mahashwata Devi talking about Adivasis, talking about marginalized, talking about subalterns in Bengali, Rodali, Choti Mota and his arrow, Munda and his arrow, Shishu, such a, I'm, I'm sure some of you might have had it in your syllabuses as well. And Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak was the one who actually translated her stories. Tra by Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak translated the, the short stories, imaginary maps, old women, dress stories. And this question also comes in your exams, by the way. So all of these questions on Mahashwata Devi coming in, again, giving visibility to um, uh, to the marginalized today. Uh, your homework is also related to Dalit feminism. And Mahashwata Devi has actually played a very critical role in this particular field. And we'll talk more about it. But it's actually talking about the double marginalization that a Dalit woman has to face. It's just not what the Dalit men are experiencing altogether. Uh, right. Mahashwata Devi was very, very clear about why she was a writer. She said, my uh, the purpose of my writing is to expose the faces of exploiting agencies, the feudal minded land owner, his henchmen, the religious head altogether, so called, look at the word, so called religious head, all of them, uh, all of whom as combined force are out, uh, right, are out for lower caste blood. And this was so important. She wanted to expose the fact that everybody was just uh, for, you know, this lower caste blood. They were exploiting the lower classes. That is the reason they were able to maintain their hegemony. They were able to maintain their supremacy. This is something that Mashwata Devi talks about in greater detail as well.
Bama is another important writer and a Karak is becoming a very important work. There is a YouTube video where you're able to see Bama's interview. Uh, you can actually watch that as well. Now, we who are asleep must open our eyes and look about us. We must not accept the injustice of our enslavement by telling ourselves that it is our fate. Religion prevents, always remember, religion prevents uh, any sort of rebellion. Because it tries to tell you that don't worry, God will make things better. But that never happens. So you have to make sure that it's going towards action-oriented literature. That is also the reason why Dalit literature is inspired by Marxist writings altogether. Right? It is our fate. You need to stop accepting that altogether. We must crush all institutions that, ca that use caste to bully us into submission and demonstrate that human beings are none uh, uh, who are high or low. She says we can't really accept things uh, that, that, you know, this is actually the doing of a caste. We need to be more vocal. We must make sure that we are, we are getting ourselves awake from this long slumber of exploitation. Because we've been completely numbed and we are not actually uh, participating. Karak is, of course, a very important life narrative which is coming in. Uh, because of Karak, Bama also faced ostracism because people complain that, you know, she's portrayed our society in a very negative light. She's portrayed our society in a very bad light altogether. That is what people actually complain. Bavarao Bagul, again, very important. Uh, Jeva me chat shorali hoti. When I had concealed my cars, death is getting cheaper. Maran swasta hoti. Uh, Ambedkar's Bharat. So, so again, very important writings which are trying to tell you about how the people uh, uh, are, are not really treated as equal, the social injustices which are there. And please remember, he was very, very clear. He said, our literature is not a literature of vengeance. We don't want to take vengeance from anybody. We're not here to take vengeance. It is not a literature of vengeance. It's not a literature that wants to spread hate. We do not want to spread hate. It is not a literature of vengeance at all. He was very clear about it. He was very, very clear about it. So here, Babarao Bagul is trying to say that it's just a literature which wants to give visibility to the people whose voices have largely remained silent. You, you want to make sure that the world knows about the atrocities that were uh, being committed on the Dalits largely. I was enjoying coloring this. So sorry. Okay. Uh, Namdeo Dasal again writing originally in Marathi. Poetry he said is politics. So art for art's sake is clearly not their plea. They are not people. They are not writers who believe uh, in art for art's sake at all. Right. These are not writers who are largely. So when, when you talk about all these writers, like even for that matter, we have writers like Urmila Pawar, right? Urmila Pawar is also equally important as a Dalit writer. Urmila Pawar is writing Amati Itihas. Um, so, you know, all of these writings, what are they trying to tell you? That poetry, uh, your, your art for art's sake is not going to be applicable at all. Your art for art's sake is not something which, which comes uh, over here or, you know, is also a privilege for them because they have this agenda of highlighting the atrocities. Uh, Ami Itihas, Gadwala, uh, so this is Urmila Pawar's writings. So, you know, Urmila Pawar was going to these oral writing workshops and she's compiling these experiences um, in, this, in this particular narrative that so many people actually had experienced these problems, so many people had actually uh, undergone. So, Dalit literature is focusing on the Dalit point of view. Dalit literature is trying to make sure that, you know, you are getting disillusioned from the uh, entire aura of Hinduism telling you about the stratification altogether. You know, there is a very famous quotation by Uma Chakravarti. So, Uma Chakravarti, uh, uh, the critic, what does Uma Chakravarti say? Uma Chakravarti says a very beautiful line. Uh, Most reprehensibly, caste ideology denies subjectivity to the Dalits by depriving them of dignity and personhood. So, what has mainstream uh, discourse done? It has denied personhood. They are trying to tell them that we are also humans. Don't forget, forget us, right? And that is exactly what other writers are saying that, you know, even Bama was saying that, that, that constantly there is just like people who are there uh, in the upper classes. They've become hand in glove and they've always been against uh, the Dalit blood. You've denied, you've deprived personhood altogether. 
Namdia Dasal is writing a current of blood, which is a poetry collection. And he says that I enjoy discovering myself. I'm happy when I'm writing a poem. I'm happy when I'm leading a protest or, or prostitutes fighting for their rights. So this is something which is gratifying for these writers. They know that by just using the weapon of literacy, can they undo these justices a little? Golpitha is again the first important uh, poetry collection. Uh, Namdeo Dasal, I was born on footpath when the sun was leaked and being dimmed into the bosom of the night. So he's a poet, right? Namdeo Dasal is a poet using common idioms, writing important works with in very common languages altogether for all of us, right? Right. So that is another important aspect that we are able to see in these Dalit writings. Balut is also another important work. Uh, it is trying to tell you about Daya Pawar's journey. Daya Pawar's journey is something which is being uh, spoken about over here um, in, in Balut. Again, trying to tell you these unlettered uh, people are taking the, the, the discourse of learning ideas, representing those ideas to gain personhood altogether. Lakshman Mane, again, a very important writer. Upara is uh, another major work that you are having. As it is when we are looking at uh, Lakshman Mane, Lakshman Mane's writings are critically crucial. Um, Upara is first published in 1984. Upara is coming. It was published in Marathi uh, and it was coming in 1984 um, you know this is actually trying to tell you about what kind of problems the writer actually had to face because of caste system what kind of issues the writer had, had to face because of caste system and please remember that you know uh, Lakshman Mane was the first person from his community he was the first person from the Kaikadi community to gain graduation degree so he was the first person, the first person of the Kaikadi community who got a graduation certification, who got graduated altogether. Upara is actually, again, a brilliant autobiography. A.K. Kamath had translated Mane's autobiography Upara into English. This question also comes in. But you can remember it was published in Marathi in 1984. Uh, Mane was the first person of the Kaikadi community to uh, get this graduation certificate, graduation degree altogether. So all of these are very important writings trying to tell you about their struggles. Small little thing that, uh, things that we are taking it uh, you know, for granted. They are being discussed over here in greater detail. Urmila Pawar, again, Urmila Pawar is coming in. Urmila Pawar um, is, is writing works like Aidan, The Weave of My Life. Very, very popular. It was translated into English by Maya Pandit. Created stories like Coverage, A Childhood Tale. Uh, very, very popular, by the way. And Urmila Pawar, you can also keep that in mind. Aiden is, of course, Aiden is, of course, there. And you also have Amiti Itihasa. You can you can even make a note of it. I, I had written it before also, uh, if in case you've not written it. Again, trying to tell you about her interactions when she was there at the oral history workshop. Oral literature has played a very critical role, by the way, because through oral literature, some people who could not read and write were are also telling their stories, right? Some people who could not. I'll give you this example. You can take this example as well. So uh, that is the reason uh, un your Anubhav is so very important. So there is uh, there is James M. Freeman and James M. Freeman comes in. James M. Freeman is writing Untouchables. Okay, James and Freeman is writing Untouchable and Indian and Indian. So this is this is a story that he's writing on behalf of somebody. An Indian life history and Indian life history. This is the work of uh, Freeman's writing Untouchable and Indian life history. And this is an autobiography of Mooli. This is the autobiography of Mooli who does not know how to write. He is not lettered. He is not educated. Uh, but the narration, uh, you know, is, is something that is translated in from Oriya, from Oriya into English by James M. Freeman. James M. Freeman translated it from Oriya. Uh, James M. Freeman was an American anthropologist. He was an American anthropologist. You know, what is so depressing? The depressing part is that Mooli is thrown from school. Why? Because he came. He is thrown from school because he's coming from the so-called polluted uh, you know uh, polluted caste called the Bauri the Bauri 
so how people are considered to be polluted uh, that is something that defeats logic and understanding altogether so what are we able to see that uh, he's coming from a supposedly polluted community and that is the reason he's actually thrown out from the school that is the reason he is actually not permitted to come inside and he's thrown out of school altogether so uh, all of these writings what are they largely helping us understand these writings are largely helping us understand the condition the condition altogether of people uh, now here i would want you to also make a note of a couple of things uh, uh, first of all you have to keep that in mind that of course all of these writers are important uh, all these writers are primarily talking they are discussing about oppression revolution the weapon of literacy uh, it's protest literature which is fighting against the hegemony of the hindu writings uh, but i want all of you to remember that there are a bunch of writers who are coming over here Sure. Um, you know, for 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 instance, Daya Pawar, uh, Jyoti Rao uh, Phule, or B R Ambedkar. Uh, but there are other writers also besides, like you know, Lakshman Mani, Supara, or Sharan Kumar Limble is the outcast. There are some other works as well. Let's just write some of them. You have Vasant, uh, and and we'll discuss some of them in tomorrow's lecture as well. You are having Vasant Moons, Vasant Moons, Vasti. Vasant Moon is writing Vasti. Vasti is actually uh, subtitled as growing, growing, growing up untouchable in India. Growing up untouchable in India. Childhood is becoming a very important uh, description because that is where the practices are internalized, and you are trying to question. You are not able to understand that. You know, this is about an untouchable boy who is living in a slum altogether because of poverty and uh, how he becomes the leader of the Dalit community. So the slum boy's journey, the slum boy's journey into becoming the leader of the Dalit community, that is a story that is being captured. That you know he becomes the leader of the Dalit community altogether, uh, despite being a person who was born into a lot of slum. But again, discrimination, the dehumanization, the atrocities that are there. Um, that you know how subhuman status. So basically, via Dalit literature, what are these writers trying to do? They are flouting the subhuman. human status they are fight uh, fl uh, flouting the subhuman status they are talking about these injustices in greater detail that is what so vasant moons vasti is an important work you also of course have om prakash valmiki om prakash no lecture on dalit writings can ever be complete without the mention of om prakash <coughs> uh valmiki om prakash valmiki is writing jhutan om prakash valmiki is writing jhutan a dalit's life a dalit's life very important work altogether a dalit's life uh, you know this is actually written in hindi then it was translated into english uh, it is telling you about the chukra the chamar uh, community altogether uh, the the chukra the chukra or the chamar committee the chukra the chukra or the chamar uh, community which is there now um, you also need to remember over here this was i think a point that aftara had also made over here so what had happened was that kashiram singh kashiram singh who is a mainstream hindi writer right he had written that it is not important for you it is not important for you to be a dalit to actually write about the dalit experience so kashiram singh a mainstream hindi writer what did he say he said it is not important for you to be a dalit to actually talk about dalit right you don't have to be a, a horse to write about a horse what did he say you don't have to be a horse to write about a horse you don't have to have to be have to be a horse to write about a horse to write about a horse and om prakash valmiki gave a very befitting to write about a horse and om prakash valmiki about a horse gave a very befitting reply he said of course you can define the contours right he said of course you can define the contours no to yes you can write about the horse his external contours his canter his neighs but when you can you can even talk about you know how uh, the sound that he is producing you can write about his neighs also but when at the end of the day the same horse is having done his share of laboring he's finished his work right he's exhausted and hungry and stands tied to the post in this table what you can write about you cannot capture what he feels what his emotions are right towards his master or his inner pain you can never capture that 
he said of course when when it comes to like you know talking about the horse you can actually talk about it jolly well but you can never ever talk about the feelings that the horse is actually undergoing that is something which you can never capture right that is something that you can never capture that is what om prakash valmiki talks about right again another important writer that you are having is lakshman gaikod right uh, so another major writer who comes in uh, is lakshman gaikod lakshman gaikod is of course important he's writing the braided uh, the branded the branded how you know uh, the dalits have been branded all together um, uh, from from a very long time uh, he is telling you about the uchala community the uchalia community can you just see that all these people are trying to tell you about so many communities that means it's such a deeply stratified society and not just that it doesn't happens in metropolitan cities because we'll just be talking about a work all together <coughs> so the pathetic life the undignified life uh, that is there this is something that lakshman gaikod actually talks about in you know in greater detail then you have sumitra bhave Sumitra Bhave is also coming in. Uh, Sumitra Bhave is writing Pan on Fire, right? Uh, so this is a major work. The the work Pan on Fire is coming. Eight, uh, you know, this is a work about eight Dalit uh, um, women and their stories all together. And these eight women are living in the slums in Bombay. They're living in slums in Bombay. That means discrimination is not something that if you are in urban spaces, if you are in metropolitan spaces, you are not facing the discrimination. You are facing the discrimination even in urban metropolitan spaces. This is what Bhavi's work is trying to help us understand. That it is not something that, you know, if you are in urban centers, this will not come. This will not come at all. You are still getting a lot of ridicule altogether. Right? You're still getting a lot of ridicule altogether. Similarly, you are having Viramas. Viramas, lives of an untouchable. Life of an untouchable. Life of an untouchable. So this is a work uh, which is coming by Virama. Life of an untouchable. Again, trying to tell you about how the Dalits are deprived of identity. How the Dalits are not given any identity whatsoever. That is also something that is uh, being discussed. So in the first part, what are we trying to establish? We're trying to establish Dalit literature as an example of protest literature, as an example of action-based literature, as not an art for art's sake literature. Autobiographies are becoming the primary ways through which the Dalit identity is being recovered. Uh, autobiographies are not just the stories of an individual, but they are telling you about the entire community and their plight, the Uchalas, the Chamars, so many communities that are are being spoken about in these writings and the oppression the dehumanization the caste oppression uh, the revolt the rebellion that is this uh, the spirit which is being discussed so that is primarily something that uh, we have discussed in the first part tomorrow we'll actually continue with this tomorrow you also are uh, having a class uh, with me uh, like uh, you, you have a mock test by the way at 11 30 on the app platform uh, be prepared for that of course and there is also a you know a youtube lecture at 9 a.m um Okay, I don't know why this is not there. Anyway, uh, the topic I'll I'll be sharing it. Uh, I'll I'll share the topic via Telegram platform. You don't have to worry about that. That I'll I'll definitely do that. Uh, however, uh, there is a little bit of homework which is there for all of you. Uh, I want all of you to read a little more on subaltern studies. I want all of you to cover at least the writers that we've discussed today in Dalit literature and make concise notes about them and research a little more on Dalit feminism. Dalit feminism is something that I've already shared a couple of PDFs, at least two to three PDFs on the Telegram platform as well. You can read it from there. So this is your homework for today uh, before you come for tomorrow's lecture. So subaltern studies, Dalit literature, Dalit feminism. These are the things that I largely want you to focus on today. Cover the writers that we've looked at uh, in today session for sure and otherwise just cover uh, you know these three broad topics and tomorrow we'll start we'll complete the second part and then we'll go on to the topic the topic i'll share it in the uh, on the telegram platform all right um all right thanks so much everyone for joining and uh
I know, I know, I know. That's really sad. That's really sad. It still continues. That's unfortunate. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Please take good care of yourselves and study hard. Uh, if there are any other concerns, let me know. Classroom students, you're having a lecture at 1 o'clock and you're having a lecture at 9 p.m. I'll catch up with all of you during the lectures. And for the rest of you, please block your calendars. Tomorrow, we are meeting at 9 a.m. I'll share the schedule for tomorrow's 9 a.m. Second part will be done for sure. And tomorrow, be prepared for your 11.30 a.m. mock net. 11.30 a.m. mock net of 100 questions on the Baijo's exam prep application where you can gauge your performance as well. Fine. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Take good care of yourself. Thanks, Asara. Thanks so much. Um, and yes, of course, today I think the uh, the shout out for participation goes to Aftara. Uh, I saw Aftara answering a couple of important uh, things and I think a couple of important contributions being made. A lot of you were participating, but the shout out for the day I think goes to her. Uh, thanks, Manisha. Thanks, Anamika. Thanks, Sayali. Thanks, Rashmita. Thanks, Manisha. Thank you so much, everyone. Take good care. Thanks, Nikumoni, Nilofar, Nilofar Amin. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Tulika, Dipsa, Komal, Liji, Manisha, Bubbly, uh, Liji. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. God bless. Bye. See you. All right. Thanks. Please study hard uh, and I will catch up with all of you tomorrow then. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Okay. Where is this? Here it is. Thanks, everyone. Oh God, what's happening? Mm -hmm.